Hi there! In today's video, we're gonna cover the technical aspects of the customer lifecycle. We are gonna cover uh, all the custom fields that we use, all the automations, uh, and also how we set up the account. First, let me explain why we use three automations. They have three use cases. So one, when the opportunity is next to closing win, uh, you know, it's uh, one step, uh, one stage behind the close one stage. Uh, the customer success team actually would like to know uh, when that happens. So they get prepared ahead of time. So in this case, the, uh, the customer lifecycle stage is called the pre-onboarding. So that one is the first use case. The second use case is we're going to include a few changes to the account, uh, to the customer lifecycle stage field when an opportunity is closed one. Also, it's going to trigger a few email alerts and etc. Third, is we included the timestamps for every change that's done at the customer lifecycle stage field. And that helps us track uh, every timestamp for each stage in, in the customer lifecycle. Um, with that, I think it's important for me to show all the custom fields that we use. So let's go ahead and record my screen. So it's pretty basic. We're gonna create a pick list uh, for the customer lifecycle stage. It includes all the five stages that Anthony mentions in his video. So one, pre-onboarding, two, onboarding, three, implementation, four, early adoption, and five, mature adoption. The next, we can't forget about the timestamps. So customer life cycle. So it's a one uh, daytime field for customer life cycle stage. We have five, so we created five of those fields. Um, and I think it's a good time to demonstrate these the first automation, I mentioned it's a use case where the customer success team would like to know ahead of a close one that there is an opportunity, uh, that there is an account that is approaching onboarding, right? So here at this, uh, um, this automation, it's a flow. It's a record trigger flow. It's going to trigger when a record is created or updated and the entry condition is actually pretty simple so stage name is going to be equal to negotiations completed that's uh, the stage prior to close one and also we would like to perform that for every new business so type equals new business we want this to run only when a record is updated to meet the condition requirements and also uh, optimize the flow for actions and related records because we're going to update a, rec a different record, uh, an account record. Next step in this flow, which is update account, uh, it's an update records element. So I specify conditions for the object account. The ID is equal to the record account ID. So it's the account that holds the opportunity. And then the update, the fields that we're gonna update this time is gonna be customer lifecycle stage one timestamp. And we're gonna input the current daytime. So it's flow, current daytime. 
and also customer lifecycle stage will set to one pre-onboarding. The second and last element of this automation, the flow, is going to be an email alert. So pretty simple, we created an email alert for account for the customer lifecycle assignment. Pretty basic. Uh, we're just going to alert that there is a new account on the at the pre onboarding stage. And we set the record as the record account ID. Pretty simple. Let me uh, quickly demo this. So changing to negotiations completed at this opportunity. Actually, let me show the account first. So as you can see here, there's nothing about customer life cycle. Let me refresh so you guys can trust me. Very cool. So no customer life cycle whatsoever, but once we change to negotiations completed and refresh this page, here we see the customer life cycle stage path. And then the field is set to pre onboarding. And now we see the entire customer success uh, section with the customer life cycle stage as pre onboarding and the customer life cycle stage timestamps with the stage one timestamp. Very cool. All right, so let's move to the second automation of the day, which is gonna be an addition to an existing flow that most of the companies use. So when an opportunity is closed one, it does change a lot of the fields in, at the account level, especially like including account, uh, customer sense, we change the account type to be uh, from prospect to customer. We we add timestamps. If you need timestamps, you change. I don't know. You change. You include an, a new CSM name. You you change the account owner, as an example. Um, but for this case, um, we're gonna include just a small update to the account. These updates are done for. Uh, the customer lifecycle stage to be set as onboarding. And also we include the customer lifecycle stage timestamp uh, to be uh, the current date time. Those are the two fields that you need to include. Uh, feel free to include more if you need, but uh, these are the two basic ones. Also, just make sure you include the CSM team or person that will be receiving the close one email alert. Okay. And now moving to a quick demo of this. So the opportunity is now close one. And then that should change quite a bit at the account level. Nice. So he moved from pre onboarding to onboarding and also included uh, the timestamp for that move. With that, I think we can now talk about the third automation, which is going to be the timestamps. So we're going to use a record trigger flow again. This time it's going to trigger when a record is updated. Updated because you shouldn't be creating accounts regular basis. People should not be able to create new record, new account records. So, and also we want to run this when the customer lifecycle stage is changed, like it's showing in here. So customer lifecycle stage changed true. And we're going to optimize these for a fast field update because it's going to um, change its own record, um, the record that's being triggered. And we, we don't need to consume a lot of uh, 
processing power. So let's use the fast field update. When you choose the fast field update, the only thing you need to do is assignment. So use the assignment element. And in this case, we only need really to include uh, the stage three, stage four, and stage five timestamps because the stage one is gonna be set when the opportunity uh, hits um, the, the stage that prior to close one, and stage two, which is gonna be onboarding, always hits when opportunity is close one. So let's see how these stage formulas work. They're pretty much all the same, so if, the customer life cycle stage equals to implementation and the timestamp field is blank, then we include uh, the now time. So we use the now uh, formula to give the today uh, timestamp, uh, today timestamp with date, uh, with date and time. And then if it already exists, then keep the timestamp that, that exists right now. It's going to be the same formula, but with different values. So for stage four, you just need to change this part to be stage four and use the stage four fields in the formula. Okay. Same with the stage five. Just need to make sure you put five mature adoption and change the fields in the formula to be to use the stage five fields. With that, you're good to go. And let's see that in action. So let's move to implementation when that happens. Timestamp is right here. Let's move to early adoption right here. And then mature adoption. Cool. All right. So we covered all the custom fields, all the automation. And now let's see how to configure the account page. The reason for this is you don't want uh, your salespeople to be seeing, uh, I don't know, customer CSM, uh, CS fields uh, when it's not needed, right? And also, uh, you want to make sure those fields only appear when they are actually being used, right? So we included this, uh, this is called path, you know, that bar that I was clicking earlier in the video. This actually is tied to uh, the customer lifecycle stage field. Uh, it's pretty nice, very helpful. Um, I think it's a easy, easier to use. It's easy to visualize uh, important things for your team. In this case, it's important to visualize the customer lifecycle stage. So we included that in here and we made it visible only when the account is a customer or you know the customer lifecycle stage is equal to pre-onboarding because that the pre-onboarding happens before it turns into a, a customer so we just need to make sure it appears when it's at that stage uh, next is we included two sections one called customer success and customer lifecycle stage timestamps. So for the customer success, we included the customer lifecycle stage, um, customer health, you know, everything that's uh, important for the customer success team, uh, customer sense, renewal date. But most importantly, this component is visible only when the customer lifecycle stage uh, field is populated. In that case, we included 
all the customer lifecycle stage items. Just make sure it, we don't miss anything. And also, I want to make sure that it populates when type equals customer or the type field equals to churn. All right, cool. The same should work for the customer lifecycle stage timestamp timestamps uh, section. So let's make sure that type equals customer and here type equals churned. Oh, very important. It's either this or this or this or 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 or, right? So show the component when any of the filters are true. This is pretty important. Once you do that, save the, pa uh, the page. This is a lightning page. So save the lightning page. And that's it. In this video, we, we made it pretty simple. Only it pops up when the lead lifecycle stage is populated or the account is a customer or churn uh, record. But you can really go deep and make sure you want to display these fields for customer success people, any profile that you want to choose as well. We made it pretty simple, but you can make it more advanced as needed, okay? Hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.